and welcome to Doubling in Journals and today I am going to be sharing the memory keeping insert in my everyday carry traveller's notebook from Traveller's Company and I'll do a quick flip for anybody who is new to this channel and if you are new welcome. So for those of you that watched previous videos I chose this sticker thank you for your recommendations this one won <laughs> so <laughs> this sticker went on to my file folder and it was a gift from Louise over at coffee tea paper following her travels in Japan so I just wanted to share that my last video I was decorating in my diary so this is my weekly insert I write appointments or whatever on one side and I decorate on the other and today we're going to be having a look at this insert which is my memory keeping insert so let's get started I shared a video where I decorated the cover and oh I'm drinking my coffee kiwi penguin <laughs> and if you wonder why I said that <laughs> it's because one of the people that follows my channel is a lovely lady whose YouTube name is Kiwi Penguin. And she sent me this delicious, absolutely delicious coffee. And I love it. <laughs> so thank you very much, Kiwi Penguin. And I thought of that because the first thing I looked at in my memory keeping insert is this little card that you sent to me. So I think I journaled about your Happy Mail gift in my previous insert. But I put this card in the front of this one because it says you are simply the best, which is so cute and so sweet of you. And I've just put the month and year that I started the insert into the front. And this insert started, as I say, in January. And one of the first things we did at the beginning of the year, we went on a trip to London, just my son, Theodore and me. We went to stay with my partner's brother and his lovely wife. And we had a wonderful time exploring London. So I have used this London sticker that I've been hoarding forever and a little bit of Traveller's Factory washi tape that Louise gifted to me. And this here, we went to a art gallery. I think it was the Damien Hurst Art Gallery. And there was an exhibition of work by Brian Clark. And a lot of his work is like stained glass and it was absolutely beautiful. And I think these are like studies that he does for the stained glass with sort of cut out pieces of paper, which were equally beautiful. So that was really fun. And I saw a Damien Hurst installation, which was a wonderful, if bemusing experience because I did not get it at all. <laughs> It was like a whole room and it was all full of like medical equipment. I've just realised, I've just had a sip of my coffee and I've just realised I'm going to have to edit out all the gulping. <laughs> I didn't think that went through. We went on the London Eye. Now, when they said that they had bought tickets for the London Eye, I was absolutely terrified because I'm not very keen on heights. And if I get scared, that can trigger me. But in fact... It was a really lovely experience. I didn't feel scared at all. You feel completely safe. You're in quite a big glass pod. I mean, this pod here is, is, is really big. And so you can walk around in it and you don't feel... Well, I didn't feel that I was in any danger whatsoever. And you've got the most amazing views across London. It was really, really cool. So we enjoyed that. And we also went to the National Theatre and saw an amazing production of Roald Dahl's The Witches which was wonderful. We were so spoiled. We had some really cool meals. We went to a dim sum restaurant, which I'd never been to before. So that was another new experience. This photograph is of Greenwich. We visited Greenwich. We went up the Thames by boat and I absolutely love boats. So that was probably my favourite bit of the whole weekend. <laughs> Just the ride. <laughs> But we went to see Greenwich, which is beautiful. I would quite like to return and have a longer time there because it's really lovely. And yes, yeah, so that was an absolutely amazing weekend. We were so spoiled and we walked and walked and walked and walked and walked. We did so much walking, but really, really good time. So that was a lovely start to the year. And then this is a happy mail card that I received from Dawn. Thank you, Dawn. Isn't that delicious? <laughs> so that's inspired a pink page. And I've used some of the stickers that she sent to me, a little bit of paper to match the pink in the card and some little circles, this little piece of washi, which says happiness. And I've used some ribbon stickers here. I had a lot of fun doing that because I don't often use pink. 
So that was a really fun page to make. And then I get to keep the card that Dawn sent me so I can look back and reread it whenever I want. Now, this next page. Oh, yeah. So these are my granddaughters. They're twins. They're both 13. Obviously, they're both the same age. <laughs> Otherwise, they wouldn't be twins, would they? So on this page, on this particular day, I was taking my granddaughter into town because for her Christmas gift, I had gifted her a shopping trip because she just adores shopping. So I gave her a budget and we spent the day in the city and she shopped to her heart's content. But this picture is when we stopped for lunch. She really loves a restaurant train called ZZ's. So she really likes pizza in there. So we had a pizza in ZZ's and she had a mocktail. Both of my, look, this one has a mocktail too. They do really love mocktails. And I also took this one, this little girly out on a trip to the city we just went for lunch because she'd had a christmas present so she was an odor shopping spree although we did a little bit of shopping but because she'd had lunch out with me i wanted to have lunch out with the other one too so that it's really nice to have sort of one-to-one -one time with each of them without the other one there so it was really fun and i love how this page came out i just really simply just just took a piece of this blue uh washi paper and matched it sort of not matched it because obviously they're just roughly torn but i think i chose it from that color there which was in the photograph although afterwards i thought i could have just chopped that off <laughs> but never mind and here i thought about actually using a different color ink which was cool because sometimes i forget and i just use the pen that's on my notebook and i forget i've got all these other pens with beautiful colored inks in and i used this washi tape which i had in my stash that was a happy mail gift so I can't tell you where that one came from, but I used a piece here and then cut out some elements just for a really simple decoration. And I really like how that one looks. Now this page isn't finished. I am journaling here about a performance that my son did at school in the musical Oliver. He played Fagan and he was amazing. And he got a lot, a lot of laughs and a lot of clapping. It was really cool to feel so proud. I felt so proud. And I've kept the program here and I've decorated or started decorating in response to the sort of colours that are in this um, bit of the program that is matching. Put some little kisses. This is a little Tim Holtz element that Marie gifted to me. Oh, a long time ago, she gifted me a packet of those and I sort of hoard them, but this was sufficiently special experience for me to crack one out. And the reason I haven't journaled yet is because I need to ask my daughter for a photograph of him because she took a photograph of him and just which we can crop so that it's only got him in it and I can put that in my journal and then I'll write a little bit about it. So I just note to self, ask daughter <laughs> for a photograph. Well, this page, I am celebrating a wonderful happy mail that Louise over at Coffee Tea Paper sent me after her trip to Japan and Europe. She lives in Australia, so that was a big trip for her and her family. And I think they had the most amazing time. And I was blown away by her happy mail and so touched by the lovely things that she gave to me and the fact that she thought of me whilst holidaying with her family was so sweet so on this page i use one of the stickers that she gave to me because she stayed in the tokyo station hotel how jealous am i <laughs> But not at all. I really, I, I, I love to live vicariously through other people. So I am very happy for her that she stayed there. And I used this little stamp that she did for me because that was another place she visited, Kyoto. And this is a bookmark that she gave to me, which I thought, oh, I could use that in my journal, but I've got it just slipped in here at the moment. And that was her letter. So that was really wonderful. And I've got an unboxing video of all the goodies she sent to me on my channel. And in fact, the same time that I got that happy mail, I received this beautiful card from Pat. I put, thank you, Pat. <laughs> By the way, I haven't mentioned any lettering. I'm not good at lettering, I know. But any lettering that I've done, I'm so proud. Thank you, Pat. Have I done any more? Yes, the London Eye exploring london i just use these pit artist brush pens from faber castell i really love them because i'm not very good at hand lettering and they're quite firm so it makes it a little bit easier i struggle and they've also got a small nib 
which I find the Tombow markers that a lot of people use for hand lettering. They're too big. They make like really big words, which I don't want in my little tiny journal. So I use those. So yes, I received this card from Pat and because it was quite large and wouldn't fit in my journal, I just took a picture of the front. It's up in my art room at the moment, but I put a picture of the front of it so that I could remember it in my journal and I was so touched by her letter it was lovely and I still haven't written back to anybody I'm going to do that really really soon so again I went through this style of just choosing a piece of coloured paper because I really liked how it turned out when I did the blue one so I chose green to match the green in the card and I tore out some paper and made this design with some flower stickers and some greenery stickers and this girl from a London Gifties pet tape. I think she's beautiful. I think I've used this one before in my journal. So if you follow me, you'll have seen her before. I really like her because she's green. <laughs> Don't know why. I like her green hair. <laughs> and of course she's drinking coffee, just like me. Oh, it's so delicious. But I do have to edit out the gulping sounds because they're not nice, are they? <laughs> right, next page. Oh, this was a picture I took at my daughter's house, my younger daughter's house. She invited me and Theodore over for an evening. She cooked us the most delicious meal. And then we had a lovely music evening where we were just sharing each other's favourite music. <laughs> so she had a big telly on and we were all able to put uh, songs into the playlist. And we were chatting and drinking wine, of course. <laughs> And it was a really lovely time. And she got her fire going. She's got an open fire in her house, which I think is absolutely gorgeous. And she'd got, it's not a very good picture because it was obviously dark. We were just in candlelight with the fire burning. And I've decorated this one with a few different bits and pieces. I've got some old book paper here that was sent to me. And I can't remember because I don't know what language this is. It could have been Mary in Poland or it could have been maybe Kiwi Penguin in Germany. I don't know, I can't remember anymore. Sorry guys, I've had it absolutely ages. And then this feather came from a washi tape that Emily sent to me. And I think that's a London Gifties one. And that little heart came from a ephemera pad that Kiwi Penguin sent to me. And then I've used some other little pieces that were in my stash and a bit of my favorite washi tape. So I really love the colours on this page. I mean, it's never going to be the case. I'm going to prefer colour to these kind of muted beiges and browns. That really is my favourite. <laughs> and then, oh, I'm complete contrast because <laughs> we've got we've got a red page here. And that was inspired by this lovely card that Mel sent to me. Thank you, Mel. So I put a lot of my happy mail stuff in my memory keeping journal because I want to remember all these lovely gifts that people give to me. And when I flip through old journals, those memories come flooding back and it's really, really lovely because it makes me feel cared for and special. And yeah, it's just great for my self-esteem. <laughs> so she sent me this lovely postcard, which I've kind of put on upside down. It's not upside down this side, but I think I should have taped it that way because when I flip it up, um, her message is upside down, so I have to turn my journal around, but that's okay. So that was a beautiful card and I really love it. So it's gone into my journal and I matched the red, of course, on this page and I've done my journaling under the card. And this is a picture of my grandson, who's nearly two, I can't believe it. And I'd been looking after him while his mummy had her nails done. And we'd been looking around the shops. We went into a charity shop and he chose this pre-loved toy, which he really, really liked. And they all had like different buttons. So you had to twist one and push another one and splat another one. And I can't remember what the fourth one was. And it played music and the little things popped up. And we went into a coffee shop. So very simple little entertainment for him. We went into a coffee shop. I had my first ever chai latte. Oh my goodness. It's like drinking Christmas. <laughs> really, really enjoyed that. And he's eating a biscuit in that picture. But he spent ages working out how to open up a little flap. So it kept him entertained while I had my drink. And then we went for a walk because he's walking now. So 
he walked around the town and explored and pointed at things and babbled at people and was generally adorable. So I put these little red pieces of washi paper to match the card on that side of the page. I've got a little stamp here that Jackie sent to me. Thank you, Jackie. And it's a Bone Coochin one, isn't it? The journey is the destination. So I really loved that and I thought the red ink matched. And I put these little tiny bears, these little tiny bears that I got in a happy mail because we always call this little one Baby Bear. <laughs> His nickname is Baby Bear. <laughs> and yeah, so I put the little teddy bears. And I think this is my last page. Yes, this is my last page. We had a day out. Oh, it was only a few days ago, actually. We went to Crazy Golf. So I was with my daughter and my son and my grandchildren and we went to crazy golf and obviously little one he couldn't actually play golf but it's so bright and colorful and beautiful there that he had a whale of a time toddling around until he suddenly decided it would be really fun to steal the golf balls from other families <laughs> so he wasn't too impressed when we tried to persuade him that that wasn't a good thing to be doing <laughs> So we had to give him different things to carry so that he would stop taking people's golf balls. So that was really fun. And we'd actually had a bit of a rubbish start to the day because we went to go on the bus because there was too many of us to fit in a car. And so we decided we would go on the bus into the city where the crazy golf um, game place is. And the first bus, the bus we were waiting for didn't come. And then the next one didn't come. And then finally one came that was actually absolutely rammed with people, some of whom were really very unpleasant. So I got a little bit anxious about that. They were, I mean, a bus had broken down. It was nobody's, nobody's fault. These things happen. But some people get so angry about things that, I don't know, feel inappropriate to me. So it wasn't a very nice bus journey. And then when we got into the city, when my granddaughters had chosen for us to go to Zizi's again for her pizza, because uh, she's a bit of a fussy eater, so it's not always easy to find places to eat. Any of you that have got children will know what that's like, I'm sure. But we couldn't go to where she wanted because it was full, and the next place we tried was full, and the next place, and we were all getting more and more hungry. And then we found this place called Pizza Punk. I don't know if it's a chain. I'm sure it was called Pizza Punk, and it did the best pizza in Leicester <laughs> it was really really good and even my granddaughter agreed that it could possibly have been better than ZZ's so that was that was a really good find so next time we go into the city we can go there if we're with her so that's how far I've got in my memory keeping journal I'm using a short trip insert because they do bulk up and I've got my diary insert in here and I have a super lightweight paper insert in here and so I don't want this to get too bulky so I'm using the short trip and that's working out really well for me I just got interrupted by a delivery of dog food dogs were going crazy okay so where was I I was just saying I'm using the super light no I wasn't I was just saying that I am using the short trip insert and I'm going to purchase one of the travelers company binders so that I can keep all my short trip inserts together for the year or half a year, depending on how quickly I fill up a binder. So there we go. What I'm going to do now is my focus of the week. Right, I do my focus of the week in my Camel Traveller's Notebook from Traveller's Company. And I just absolutely adore this coffee cup charm that I have on the front. And let's have a look. Now, I was using a mushroom deck last week, which was gifted to me by Rachel. Thank you so much, Rachel. If you're listening, I absolutely adore that deck. It's so interesting. So the card that I picked last week was a card with an illustration of this mushroom, the Green Elf Cup which of course I'd never heard of. And I think it's absolutely beautiful, beautiful mushroom. <laughs> it's really bright jade green. And apparently it stains the wood that it's growing on so that the wood becomes green. And this is a quite a highly prized wood. It's valued by woodworkers who use it for inlays. Let me just show you an example. Here's an example of some beautiful handcrafted wood where they've used the wood that's been stained by the 
green elf cup mushrooms you can see that beautiful bright jade colored wood in the inlay so i thought that was really interesting so thank you rachel now i am moving on today to use a new deck that i've got because i'm just always buying tarot decks i can't stop myself <laughs> i've got no willpower so the deck i'm going to use this week is this one which is the tarot of the divine which has been inspired by folklore and fairy tales from around the world so what i thought i would do is i will pick a card and then whilst i am decorating my page i will read you the fairy tale that we get so let's just give it a quick shuffle whoops that wasn't very effective was it <laughs> I think it's because I'm not on a flat surface. I'm shuffling on my journal. Let's try one more. That's better. And not that it really matters which card we get, but there we go. It's all shuffled. And let's see. Oh, exciting. <laughs> the four of wands okay so what we have to do is look into the book and see which the four of wands which fairy tale that is and it's a fairy tale or a folklore from india the sanskrit epic poem <laughs> so now i've got to try and find it so i purchased this book of fairy tales and divine stories and myths from around the world and i have to try and find Let's use the index, which will be at the back, won't it? Yeah. Let's see. It's page 21. I'm so glad we didn't pick a story that we already knew. Well, I don't know this one. Some of you might know this one. It's the story of Mohini and Aravan. You're going to have to excuse my pronunciation because obviously there's going to be words in here that I won't be familiar with. And I'll read the story whilst I'm decorating the page. The Mahabharata, a Hindu mythical and historical epic, primarily documents the five Pandava brothers and their battle with their cousins, the Kauravas, for succession of the throne of Hastinapura in the Indian kingdom of Kuru. The battle was called the Kurukshetra War and it lasted for 18 days and resulted in the deaths of millions on both sides. In the beginning of the battle, the Pandava side was vastly outnumbered and failure seemed a distinct possibility. Krishna, the eighth incarnation of the Vishnu, the preserver and protector god, supported the Pandavas. He suggested that someone willingly sacrifice themselves to Kali, goddess of time and destruction, in order to ensure a victory for the Pandavas. Aravan volunteered. Aravan was the son of Arjuna, the third Pandava brother, and Ulupi, the Naga, snake, princess. He was a great warrior who did not fear death, but he did wish to be married before he died. This is because he wished for the cremation and funerary rites of a married man versus a bachelor who is buried. Unfortunately, no woman wanted to marry him, as becoming a widow was a terrible fate for anyone. So Krishna agreed to marry him. He took on his rarely seen female form, Mohini, married Aravon and spent the night with him. Their wedding is celebrated to this day in Tamil, where Aravan is the patron god of the transgender Hijra communities. Aravan then charged forward into the fight, knowing he would eventually die on the battlefield. He fought and defeated many key members of the opposing army. Then the eldest Kurava summoned the giant Alamvusha to fight Aravan. Aravan assumed his serpent form, Shisha, but Alamvusha assumed his Garuda, giant eagle man, form and ultimately beheaded him. Eventually, Aravan was avenged and the Pandava brothers won the war. 
Mahini acknowledged Aravan's death and her widowhood by breaking her bangles, beating her breasts and discarding her bridal garments before finally returning to the form of Krishna. Now, in the tarot, the Four of Wands, which is the card that this creator has associated with the story I just read, is all about celebrating a milestone. So if you look at the card, you can see that the characters Mohini and Aravan are celebrating their wedding. And it seems to me that marriage is something which is celebrated as a milestone in all cultures. I mean, it might not be called marriage and there might be different traditions associated with committing yourself to a partner for life. But it is an important milestone that we see celebrated all over the world. Having said that, this story, it seems to me that it's the sacrifice of the hero that is the key theme rather than the marriage. And I'm sure we'd all agree that heroic actions are, again, something that are celebrated and admired across the world. First kind of heroes that springs to mind for me are firefighters. They risk their lives in order to go into burning buildings and rescue people or in order to put out the fires. And we admire that kind of bravery, that heroic action very much indeed. And so for me, that seems to be the key theme of this story. And in lots of myths, fairy tales, etc. around the world, heroic actions are something that we celebrate. So is there any kind of heroic action that you can think of that you think is worth celebrating? Do let me know in the comments below. And now I'm just going to put a little bit of music on for you all to listen to as I finish decorating this page. have done a really simple little decoration here really i've picked out colors from the card i took a photograph of the card i've picked out the colors which are these like pinky red and really turquoisey blue colors and i've used some scraps of washi paper a little bit of washi tape and then done some stamping in coordinating colors and i like how that looks and then i can write around about the story that we have just read do let me know in the comments below if you enjoyed that story and if you did we'll maybe do another one next week and all that remains is for me to say thank you very much for watching and i will see you again very soon bye